Sony launches their first drone, no pun there. Some retro cameras get a new breath of fresh life. And uh, some uh, stuff going on over there, Capture One. It's gonna be a quick one, but stick with me. Let's get into this. What's going on everyone? Seth Miranda here. This is Adorama Rewind and let's just go right into it with a really quick episode this week. Uh, let's kick it off with the Sony Air Peak S1 professional drone and I mean professional when you look at this thing. Check it out. Yeah, it's nine grand, but we're talking about the smallest drone in its class that can still carry a full frame mirrorless camera, obviously geared more towards the Sony Alpha line. Uh, but there's a lot of other specs going on here. We're talking a maximum speed of 56 miles per hour, just about, and wind stability of 44.7 miles per hour, which is great, especially if the drone is supposed to be smaller than others in its class. And it's got 22 minutes of fly time without a payload. I don't know what it is, when it is carrying some weight, but this is pretty impressive. and. I mean, Sony has been known to build ecosystems, right? Cinema lines, full frame mirrorless, and all, everything else that they've done all works together. Even their cell phones work with all their gear, and just going into drones feels like a natural progression for them. Uh, a lot of interesting features here, a lot of interesting thought process going on here, but this is something on the professional level. At a $9,000 price point, you're looking at something for productions or industrial use, like architectural or you know inspecting bridges, stuff like that. Uh, and you can use a full frame mirrorless camera on to get real intense quality out of it. So I'm going to keep an eye on this one. I'm sure a few people are there as well. Let me know down below if you've been waiting for this release. We've heard about the Sony drone for a long time, and here it is with the Air Peak S1. Uh, let's hop over to something fun. I found this one. It turns out uh, there's been a lot of independent companies out there taking older cameras, refurbishing them, you know, the film analog cameras, especially instant film, and putting them back out. They're all nice and done, you know, SX-70s and all sorts of like that. Well, this one's been doing theme versions of it. Yeah, so check this out. This is the Barbie Malibu edition, and this is from a company called Retrospect. Uh, they did a Pepsi-themed one before, and now this one's for the Barbie uh, edition. It's pretty cool and really kitsch, and I think it's really interesting that they're doing them not just as refurbished to bring those cameras back to life so that people can enjoy them as the cameras they are, but also give them the, uh, what Polaroid has done over the years for a long time. They've had the Barbie uh, one-step Polaroid. I think I even had a Transformers Polaroid at one time or something like that, but there was a lot of these out there and it's the same, you know, Polaroid 600, you know, open it up and it's a one-step Polaroid, but it's got a cool color scheme and the Polaroid ones, you know, are collectible. I'm wondering if this is gonna create a new collectible market, maybe just for this um, particular company. There are a bunch of other companies I know there's places here in New York that are small boutique shops that make a point of getting as many of these older cameras as they can and, and rebuilding them so they can be back out there in people's hands. So uh, let me know if this is something that interests you. I think it's really cool that we're seeing a resurgence of film. It's not taking over like crazy, but it is cool to see that there's almost virtually brand new gear kind of out there, so to speak. I don't know. Let me know what you would think would be a really cool Polaroid theme. I, I never know which way to go with it, but I always thought it'd be really interesting to have like an all chrome one. I don't know, maybe I'm crazy. Actually, come to think of it, Olympus did an all chrome version of the little Epic cameras. I love these things. I have so many of them. I used to carry them in my pocket all the time when I shot BMX before there were camera phones. I would stick these in every bag and every pocket I could because they were the smallest that took a 35 millimeter roll of film and boom, and you got a shot. So this is my grab and go. I, I, I love these cameras. But long story short, they made a chrome version of this. I think it was an anniversary edition. Uh, I wonder if those are worth any money right now. But uh, yeah, I think a chrome Polaroid would be kind of cool. Let's head over to Canon land where they made an announcement with the ESR3, which is that super fast 30 frames per second, uh, really well built and thought out uh, sports camera. Uh, it's not their flagship they're saying, so there's something else coming, but this is one of their top tier cameras that was just announced a couple months ago. Well, they're saying it's gonna be about six months to fulfill. Uh, it could take up to that long, but I'm gonna say that's a safe bet. Uh, they're talking the same things all the other brands are talking about, which is uh, material supply shortages, import issues, uh, you know, factories working at smaller capacities and stuff like that. So uh, we're all facing this and Canon's no different, even though they're enormous and a really long standing, like century old brand. Uh, so if you do have an R3 on order, you might be waiting a little bit. I know people are getting a little like, you know, 
anxious about things not coming out and but are being announced but the thing is they are shipping just very very tiny volume and it might just take that much longer depending on where you are on the pre-order list and there might be procedures in place to get like you know the cps members theirs first because they registered or something like that because i know nikon does that with nps so if you ordered the z9 and you were an nps member and you took your order number over to the nps site they try to give you priority on allocation uh but this is what we're dealing with now so i just I didn't want to have a down note like negative story here, but I think it's important that we keep this as realistic conversation. I mean, we're even looking for the Sony a7 IV to come out and be shipped to uh, people who pre-ordered it, which was one of the most pre-ordered cameras of all time right now. Uh, and this is just where we're at. So I think it's more of a conversation of we need to temper our you know, patience and, or impatience rather, and just be psyched that these cameras are even coming into fruition and gonna be in users' hands sooner than later. And yeah, the delays are a few months, but in the grand scheme of things, once you're shooting with it and have it for a few years, you're not gonna be thinking about how many months it took you to get it. I remember when I tried to get the D800 at first, it took me over a year to get one. And uh, I never thought about, oh man, if I only had this for the last year, I'm not gonna get into this. Let's move on. Capture 122, I'm rambling again, I apologize. Capture 122 actually has some sort of launch date now, December 9th, yep. It turns out Capture 122 is gonna be shown on a live stream over on Capture One's channel on December 9th. They haven't gone into details about too many things as far as feature-wise. They are building this one up to be a pretty significant update to Capture One from 21 to 22. Uh, they're not saying too much about the features yet, so I'm kind of anxious myself to find out what's in there, but they are talking about things like HDR merge and panoramic stitching and stuff like that. So uh, it seems like they've been really listening to user feedback and putting the stuff they can in there. So if you're curious about it, make sure you check out that live stream or there will also be a stream on adderom.com slash 42 live. If you go there, we've been having live streams from the brands themselves talking about the stuff that they've been putting out there. So you can hear it directly from them and be in the chat room to ask all the questions you want. Uh, so on December 16th, we'll be having a capture one uh, takeover on that, I don't want to call it a takeover, but it's basically a live stream to let them have a platform to talk about what's going on with Capture 122 within our community. So if you haven't checked it out, go to adorama.com slash 42 live and keep up on what's showing up up there for the events. And all you have to do is log in, watch, and you can even watch it back after the fact when it's not live anymore. But if you want to ask any questions, get in that chat. Speaking of Adorama events, at the Adorama NYC store at 42 West 18th Street, you can try out the Sony a7 IV we were just talking about. They'll have them in hand and you can have them in your hands to check them out. I know you've heard a lot. You've seen 10 tons of videos online about them, but uh, keep a watch on Adorama on Eventbrite. And this is a good chance to just go over to Eventbrite, type in Adorama, this will pop up and just hit follow right here. Boom, follow right mm, here. You can stay up on all the stuff that's happening at the store, all the stuff that's happening on live streams and outside events, like when I had my Halloween workshop and stuff like that. You can stay up on it just through Eventbrite. Just hit follow and you're good to go. The, and you know, make sure you get the notifications on your phone so you can sign up for it. This one, you can basically just pop into the store between 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. and they'll be there with a, a few of these bodies for you guys to check out. And uh, yeah, I think there's been a lot of curiosity people actually hold this camera because they've heard so much about it. Well, here's your chance. All right. I also got another kind of special event. It's really uh, my buddy Joe McNally is gonna come hang out with me. Yep, Joe McNally is coming over and he's gonna go live with me at 11 a.m. on our Twitch channel and then 2 p.m. on YouTube. Uh, the 11 a.m. one is kind of interesting because when we go live on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. on the Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash XP, I shoot live. Let me take you over there. I just walk you through a bunch of lighting setups. I answer your questions about what we're doing. I show you how to put together different lighting modifiers, create different types of effects and looks and stuff like that. We talk about the differences between what happens when we make adjustments and I answer your questions live. Well, picture this but with Joe like this. So me and him hang out, we shoot with Quinn, we make some lighting happen, we answer all your questions. And it doesn't have to just be about lighting, but you know, he shares stories and insights. And it's a good time. Joe's always great to have around. And this was a really good stream. So if you missed it last time, you can try it again on December 7th, Tuesday. I'll be live with him. And then what happens is we go live on uh, YouTube and we're gonna do kind of a retrospective of the videos Joe's done on Adorama TV over the years and talk about what happened behind the scenes, what was in our headspace, the things that went wrong, the things that went right, the things that changed on the fly that you didn't know about. Think of it as like director's commentary with Joe McNally. So if you've watched any of his videos, the 
stuff he's done with Daniel, the point shoot diaries. I mean, I got married apparently in a graveyard to my zombie bride. Not really, but I did get to be a zombie groom for uh, Joe McNally this year. If you have missed that, that's on YouTube as well. Uh, but yeah, so if you missed last time, December 7th, 11 a.m. Twitch, 2 p.m. YouTube, okay? And hit all the links down below. And don't forget, the Twitch channel is only part of it. You can join the Discord and stay up on the conversation. So if you want to be real part of Adorama's community and you want to keep conversations going, get good insights from other people like you, your peers, uh, share some work, post your images, or even get some questions answered by brand reps, I got you covered inside the Discord. We have a chat room for almost every brand that's going on there, and I have most of them covered with a rep. I'm still you know, filing these guys in there to be part of the Discord, but you can actually go in there and just share images and get some feedback from it. Or if you've been talking about some support system or, or uh, you know, things you've been dealing with, you know, Tyler Hart's had an issue with a broken lens and he's getting some insight from people. Or if you wanted to get some, you know, answer from Manfrotto about what you need for grip or something like that, or talk about the next thing coming from Fuji or something like that, it's there. There's legitimate help and support and community going on in the Discord. So just go to adorama.com slash Discord. That's your invite. Go to the rules section, click the check mark, and you can unlock the rest of the chat rooms and join us there. So I'll be happy to see some of you in there, bring some of your work and some of your insights to help some other people out, or maybe you're having an issue with something and they can help you out. I don't know. Speaking of community, let's go right over to the shout out of the week. This is gonna go to a guy I've seen in every chat room, especially on Twitch, and super, super supportive, uh, as always chatting in the Discord. This goes out to Heart's Fear in the chat room, but his name is Ben. Go give him a follow. He just started shooting in January of 2021 is what he's been saying. So go check out some of his work. He's been going at it, listening to everything we've been doing live and all the videos we put out there. And he's been cleaning up some really nice portraits, really, really really quickly. So give him a follow, give him a shout, drop a comment, hit a like, do something. But this is how we build communities, everybody. We support each other. And Ben, thanks so much for being part of the chat room all the time and being so positive at Adorama. Uh, this is the least I could do for you, buddy. All right, question of the week. Thinking back to that Barbie retro camera that they rebuilt and put back out there as brand new. What's something from a vintage era? And this could be whatever you consider vintage because we all have our time frames of being around this stuff. What's something from the vintage era that you had or, or have seen that you would like to have modernized and remastered for the modern era? Not just put back out there as if it's new, but altered or customized to be work with where we're at today in photo. One of the things I can think of is I have a custom rebuilt uh, focusing spotlight from, I'm saying 20 years ago. Uh, this thing is huge, it is dangerous, it is janky, but I had it rebuilt with a strobe in it, so that's not just a constant light, but it has a, uh, an actual tube in there, and it is wired for a 4,800 watt second speedotron pack that I adapted to 2,400 watt second, but I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, and it lets me shoot a strobe projecting uh, shapes and textures and really using blades and diopters and stuff to make it really, really uh, controlled like a laser beam, but it's a strobe. Now, look what we have at a fraction of the size we can have you know like the westcott optical spot that uh, lindsay adler put out there or the nanlite bowens mount adapter projection head or the aperture projection head or pro photo made an amazing projection head uh, forever ago now it's just something you can already just click on to a light you already have it's like this big as opposed to this giant thing that i had to carry around that was totally uh, cost me a lot of money to get built. What's something you would want from the vintage era brought into today's era with a remix? Let me know down below. I know it's a niche one and I'm sure I'm not gonna get a lot of answers on this one or maybe I'll get a ton of answers. I don't know. Uh, but leave your answers down below. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the Discord. Don't forget to like, share this video around, hit subscribe plus the bell so you get notified when Adoram puts out more videos. You're not gonna wanna miss them. I'll see you on Tuesday in the Twitch stream or maybe even right here for the YouTube stream with Joe McNally. But for now, be good to each other out there. I'll see you soon. Later.